Okay, what we're going to do tonight, we'll take a look at uh, detailing a boxcar, and we're going to do plastic, we're going to do an athern, but the techniques here, you know, uh, you can use them on practically any car, but let's take a look. Uh, as I said, we're going to use an athern car. Now, of course, this has a CB&Q uh, uh, number and paint scheme, and believe it or not, if you researched a lot of the athern cars, and I have, I can tell you that many of the paint schemes actually were quite accurate, or the lettering schemes. The problem, of course, uh, is that there were other problems with the car. But here we have just the basic car. We've done, uh, you put the couplers on. Now remember, I did this presentation quite a few years ago. So, and I've updated it uh, for the current period with some new tools, things. But, you know, Atherton Box car used to be number fives. Today, it'd be, I like the Whisker 148, a lot of you probably 158s, and metal wheels. So, and also I know some of the pop-ups are gonna occur here. Uh, the, the animation, uh, when I did this presentation PowerPoint years ago, it's there and I did not take, take the time to take some of it out. But anyway, be aware that the Athern car is based on the, the 42 uh, modified design which was really the 37 design uh, when height was increased from 10 feet to uh, 10 six. Now, also you have the Atherton car has the two piece by five dreadnought ends. The problem with the Atherton car is that even though the paint schemes were correct and a lot of these cars are, you can you do things with them, they, it had the square corner. That's where Irv really kind of made a mistake. It would have been nice if you did what's called the W corner. You know, this is the square corner. The W is a rounded corner, and but the this square corner was only really used on Sioux Line, the IC, and DSSA. And of course, I had to throw my own railroad in there because I use it quite a bit. Now you notice uh, if we looked up that uh, the car itself and the number series. This, the Q at the, in the Havelock shops during 40 and 58, notice they built 16,000 cars. And the fe real features of these cars were the Murphy rectangular panel roof. You had the wood running boards, the Youngstown corrugated door, and the, of course the two piece five five dreadnought end. Now, in my case, I like to have a side view when I'm working on a car. And I also like to have a BN view of boss. In, in this case, Kalata in his book, uh, Boxcars, if you've looked at his uh, freight car manual on boxcars, he's got one on reefers, did one on tank cars. Here you have a nice BN view of that, that car. So here, if we look, you know, you, you take a look at the Ather model up in the upper left uh, or the on the left side in both. And you notice the paint scheme is quite accurate and they did a very nice job. And the same thing, if you take a look from the, the B end, you got, you got a very fine, they, Atherton did a nice job. Okay, now, so if we're gonna upgrade one, the first thing I normally do is on an Atherton type car and on many of the plastic cars, the running board, too thick. So we'll just take that off right away and set that aside. Then, on the Atherton cars, you got that ugly metal weight on the bottom. Now you don't wanna get rid of it, but you can make that car uh, a lot better with a cup very simply. You take it apart and you take out the floor, okay? And you notice the ear is on the bottom of, that, uh, of the floor, okay? All you have to do is whether you uh, a single edge razor blade, or whether it be an exacto handle here. Uh, rather than though number 11 blades, I prefer scalpel blades because the tip doesn't break very often and you can uh, make a much, press a much harder with a scalpel. And of course it's like the number 11, uh, it's a very sharp blade. But anyway, we slice off that ear on that atherin floor and we take a piece of 30 by 30 evergreen terrine and notice what we've done, we cut it exactly to the same length as the ear we cut off and we move it to the top. Remember the ear was on the bottom, now it's on the top. And 
then once we got that done, also you got to put the weight in. I am. I like to. I've tried the. You know, I've been doing this since the seventies, Putson, and I. So along the way, I don't recommend CA for putting in the weights. I still like the silicone, the Permatex, the best. And here it is, put in and glued. There is a lot of the people now are using uh, the formula. Uh, it's a canopy glue, Formula Five Sixty. You might try that. I really haven't done much that with adding weights. So anyway, we have the weight glued in, and of course, the, the weight, the car itself does not come to the suggested NMR weight, NMRA weight. And in my, I've that calculated that to most of my, all my cars are three point eight ounces. So in here, you have to uh, add. In this case, I'm using uh, just self stick on car weights that are very inexpensive. And you can go by the NMRA formula or uh, if you, I, I, a lot of times if a car gets up to four ounces, I'm quite happy. Okay, now if we look at that out there in car and you put the floor back in, you see there's that new uh, white ear that we uh, did out of that 3030 Serene. And the car, uh, so now, but now we have a bottom. Now that we turn that floor around, we have a car, a floor that's equivalent to many of your uh, up-to-date cars today. You put the frame back in, and of course, you know we know, all know Ethern did a mirror image of the brake components, so you have to cut them off, and you can reinstall them. Uh, the only thing about using the Ethern, if you're on the brake cylinder, you're going to have to uh, drill that because it obviously you don't have. If we're going to detail the bottom, we need to have the brake cylinder to uh, have the piston and the uh, clevis to which attach to uh, the. Anyway, another one we got is you can use Cal scale, and when I did this car, that is what I was using was was the Cal scale, which is now available obviously from Bowser. The uh, I have since switched over to Titchy. Uh, several of us, we did uh, gentlemen by J George Foreman. Some of you may know uh, Toman. I'm sorry, not Foreman, George Toman. And he did uh, a comparison of a lot of the brake components. And believe it or not, Titchy actually came out very close on a lot of the measurements. So, and that, is, and also cost wise, it's probably now one of the most cost effective. You can forget three bucks. I think. Uh, uh, Don has raised his price recently, but so now here the here's the same Athern car except now we've added uh, the brake cylinder and see now you have that piston rod already is in place with the clevis, so you can uh, attach the brake levers too, which come in the kale scale kit. That would be of course if you're using the Athern components, you would have to uh, supply your own brake levers. Okay, now we let that, uh, we'll let the go back to the running board. And if you pulled on an Athern car, you pull off that running board, you have four major holes. And you can see on the right side, sprues sticking up that, and that's what I'm using. Just grab some plastic sprues that fit the holes. And you know, uh, and you put in, there's four major ones that have to go in to uh, create some good rift saddles. Now, to do it, all the tools are simple. All you need is a, a, a cut, cutting tool, uh, a sprue cutter here. And I, for sanding, I'm a big fan of the, the nail files. So notice here, the when the sprues are put in, one thing, I use MEK, and whether any liquid uh, solvent for plastic will do the same thing, it will soften those sprues when you put them in. So if you take uh, a square jaw plier and you squeeze those, you will end up uh, getting them almost to the size you really need. Now you see there's one on the on the far left of that roof, if you look, you see there that is simply squeezed with that jaw pliers and it was a big round kit sprue. So then all you gotta do is take the sanding, do a little bit of sanding, clean up, and maybe a little bit of paint and 
you now have the roof ready for a new running board on that car. So it's it's a little bit of work, but not really a lot. Well, that thing just lets it set up. I normally I let that sit for a while and go work on something else. In this case, we'll look at the, we'll cut off the stirrup steps, which are pretty gaudy on an Atherton car and a lot of other plastic cars. Technically, if you ever go to the car builder cyclopedia, they are not called stirrup steps. They're called sill steps. So, and you'll see some guys uh, talk about that, that should be called sill steps. And we're also going to eliminate the molded on grab irons, which comes on some of the cars, Atherton that came on and others. If you're well, to cut off the uh, molded on grab irons, the oldest tool I, I, I can't, what using was a, uh, number 17 blade and still out there works well. This is in a number five handle and uh, I it's comfortable for my hand. You have to, whether you use a number two or number five, you have to decide what's comfortable for you. The one big thing about it is round the corners on that 17 blade, if that's what you're going to do. As we, as we look at cutting off, you prevent uh, scratches, the round, the tool on the bottom, Micromark came out with this tool for cutting off uh, molded on parts. I've, I'm a tool junkie, so I purchased it, I've tried it. I myself would say to you, if you ask me, I wouldn't spend the money on it, okay? I think there are much better tools available today than this particular tool. My favorite, uh, you see the number the on the left, the Exacto number five handle with a I grind a 17 blade to the shape I want. And it's, you notice that on the other side, now Micromark does have, uh, they they sell the mini scalpel and they sell the mini scalpel blades for them. So here you see the, on the left side again, what I do is take that 17 blade, I put a, a, a stone, a grinding stone in another Dremel and I will grind that blade to the shape I want and then sharpen it on. I use, uh, and to keep it sharp all the time, I use a fishing stone. So uh, any tackle shop or uh, your home improvement stores that sell the fishing equipment, you can pick up a stone and, and it's uh, great for that. A uh, little piece of leather and you can even put a far, finer edge on it. So those are the tools nowadays that I use all the time for the work I do in that regard. There you see that uh, the my blade as I ground it from the top. The other thing I use quite a bit in this process is uh, dental tools. And here's for the various scrapers to help clean up. So here you see, we take the Athern car. The upper cut is normally my first type of cut. And of course it's not flush with the surface, but uh, the thing you gotta be really careful, you don't wanna carve those uh, rivets off, or if you do, you can replace them with, albeit titchy rivets or some of the others, but it can notice the lower, we're getting finer. And if you wanted it even finer than that, you could do just a touch of sanding. So then you have them cut off. Also, if we move on on the Atherton cars, uh, as on a lot many of the plastic cars were molded on, the, uh, the I'm sorry, the, the brake shaft, it is well oversized and so is the retaining line. Back to here, when I was working on this car, when I, this is in earlier years, I only took off the brake shaft and did not do the retaining line. So, but again, it's just the carving and sanding process, maybe a little tedious, but I think you'll see that it's all worthwhile. Then we, uh, on an Atherton car, if you're going to, uh, one thing that you need to do is the brake platform is too small. Uh, if you check standards, like I say, it is too small. So it needs to be extended. And you can do that with a 030, 30 serene strip and uh, to make uh, new brackets for the brake step, all you do is take a one by two uh, strip serene and you can glue them on underneath the, that particular car. The brake shaft uh, is, uh, at this time I was using Detail Associates uh, 15,000 brass wire. And of course the bottom of that down there is attached to the bell crank. That's sitting next to the clevis of the brake shaft 
is on the bell crank and it's sitting next to the coupler box. And uh, if you use the Kel scale, they have a very nice one in there uh, as well. Titchy also has uh, the bell crank in their set. So here you see, this is what we've got so far and we've got somewhat of an improvement on the car. We've got a ways here to yet to go. I, this is now what I'm, I'm working currently on another one when I wanted to put some upgrade slides in here. This is one of them. So today I would carve off not only that the, the brake shaft, and I would also carve off the retaining line, which I did not do back then. So here you see, you notice that here's the reason for cutting off that retaining line also. Notice that it's, it, it's basically 8,000 wire. And if you notice, even by the proper sizes, the brake shaft is, remember, uh, 15 thousandths. If the retainer line is done at 8 thousandths, and these are close to scale, then you, are, you can see that there, the retainer line is nice to also uh, make a change on. Now, for the sill steps or the so-called stirrup steps, as the manufacturers insist on using, uh, we'll use the A-line number 21, 2900 uh, style A straight one. And for grab irons, we can use the uh, Titchy 18 inch straight. Uh, for doing those, uh, putting them on the car, the task, of course, you're going to need a drill. Uh, when I did the car, I was using a number 80. I now pretty much drill everything with a number 79. I rarely use the 80. To uh, do the sill steps, you'll need a number 76 drill. Also, you see the push pin up on top. You can, if you need an all, we need an all for marking for drilling holes. That's one simple one that, uh, and if you buy a pack of them, they'll last you a long time. Okay, I threw this in because along the way, my carpal tunnel, uh, the doc said, hey guy, you gotta quit using the pin vices or you're gonna have major, major problems. When, well, it led to surgery. So, uh, but when I did it, I bought a couple and then uh, Susan was nice enough to give me one for Christmas as well as a grandson. So. Uh, I was, I now, I still quite use these all the time. There's an 80 in the uh, far left one, a 79 and a 76. And the fourth one sitting over there is for any other drill size I need as a <clears throat> car. I originally bought that one down there in the corner on the left, but I don't recommend that Dremel. All it's good for, as far as I'm concerned, it's high or low speed. And all I, I keep a grinding bit in it. I do do that. But anyway, back to our car. So we've cut off the serve steps and we have to drill the holes. Now you can use, if you notice when you cut them off with a sprue cutter, the marks remain up there. So all you have to do is, is mark those old spots. And that's what was done with the, uh, you, whether whatever all type you use, I, I suggested uh, the, the one. And now you notice on the lower left, we have one of the A-line, uh, we've drilled the 76 hole and we've inserted the A-line sill step. When you get done on the end, here's what the car will look like from the end. Better view is of course to uh, here on the side. And the only, the only we've installed the new grab irons, at, as I said, number 79 hole today and uh, the, the uh, sill step with a number 76 hole. Also, if you're as a sidebar in back in the uh, 40s, 50s, which I modeled the spring of 55, many of you modeled the, the, this era, uh, the diameter specified on a grab iron was a 5 8 inch minimum. And that standard still exists today. The finger clearance uh, was two and a half inches. So on our cars, you can uh, make up a gauge for the two and a half inches a lot of cardboard you see out there is 20 thousandths, but uh, I would recommend you really go better now to, to about 25 thousandths. You can also find cardboard or uh, you can make it up from gluing a couple of pieces of string together as I've done there and make up a, a grab iron gauge. I threw in that uh, serrated uh, Zeron plier because I bend many of them today 
rather than use the titchy 18 inch grab, I bend my own grabs quite a bit. And uh, for that, I use a smooth jaw, but when I insert them into a car, I use the serrated jaw because uh, it seems the, the smooth jaw, many of them fly off into those black holes that surround my workbench. Mm -hmm. So here we have the car now that we have, and we've got, uh, you can see it, whole side view, we've got a sit, grab irons and we've got the sill steps on. The next thing, when we can now, those uh, are, run, I'm sorry, the, uh, we're now gonna go to the running board. And in my case back here, I used evergreen two by six sterene strip. You could use uh, scale lumber would do the same thing. If you don't wanna make your own, you're not in the mood for doing that. Uh, for example, I'll say Yarmouth Model Works makes a beautiful laser cut one that would fit very well on, on the car. So here on the end, you're gonna on that latitudinal, latitudinal running board, uh, you're gonna have to also do the extension brackets on the end. If in this case, it was three pieces of a two by six terrine. So you see a one by inch, one by two inch piece of strip string glued across the three. And then again, the brackets for the running board are made of the uh, same material. Now, also you notice we've at this point changed the brake wheel. Notice how big a difference you're right when that brake wheel makes when you change that out. Uh, I think the finest brake wheels on the market, of course, I, I have bought some now of the tangents, but I think KD and they have a beautiful line. Uh, they're running, their uh, brake wheels are excellent. So I've used them now for quite a few years. So we, in addition to the latitudinal one, you're gonna have to do something with the, the what we call, some call the corner board, some call the laterals, or in the car builders, you'll find latitudinal uh, running that board it, that I've always I use I used to use the detail associates 10 by 30 flat bar stock and you notice the bends there above the ladder you carry that piece of brass stock till it extends underneath that uh, latitudinal running board or the longitudinal running board I'm sorry and you glue it up under there and I you don't have to use the brass you it can be done with serene strips. I've done it that way. I've done it on some of the cars that way. But then we have to add the, uh, the boards. Uh, typically you see uh, seven was the uh, number of boards on the, uh, we'll call them the corner walks tonight. And uh, so if you got a chopper, you can do it that way and cut up the boards and glue them on to your bracket that uh, I said was the, uh, the brass. Now also you notice on that, the longitudinal running board, I have put the fasteners uh, on there over the, uh, the roof brackets. And so to do that, you can, the fasteners you can put up, take a pin vise, put a pin in it, and you that's one way to do it. Um, it's the way I still would do it today. So now then the last thing we have on that roof is we have to on the running boards, we have to put the corner grabs on. And the corner grabs, yeah, the corner leg, you normally want an eye bolt was very common, still is the way to go. When this car I did, and many in the past, I was using the Detail Associates 2206. And yes, you can see them there in the package a little bit, the size. Uh, I don't recommend the Titchy, they're very cumbersome. But now Yarmouth Model Works, notice, has come up with, and look at how fine and delicate those are. That once uh, Pierre came out with those, this has my, been my standard uh, corner leg. I, I use mostly the one without shoulder over uh, the one with shoulder. But, uh, and there, Pierre has kept the cost, again, very cost effective for us. So, here again, we just see that now, uh, you know, we put a little paint on that, uh, the running boards we put on, and we've now got the eye bolt in place. We can move on to another. 
as I said, I bend a lot of my grabs today and my, my jig for bending grab irons is this simple, the middle one. You just, uh, I use a caliper to uh, determine what size I need. You measure from the edge, left edge of the one, the one called the grab iron jig with a caliper and drill a hole. And now you can easily make a straight, uh, straight grab and you can bend several other ones with it. Uh, uh, later on, I'll give you the blog address if you're interested. I have an entire section on the blog that I write on bending grab irons and the this simple chain of what you can do with it. Also, the grab iron gauge we've already looked at. The, the jig on the left, I have no longer used. I originally used it for bending drop grabs. I, you know, it's a set depth. Much easier way to do that is to take a, the one of the players um, uh, again, and uh, you put a piece of tape on a player, and you can put a, a straight grab in it and close it, bend the legs down, you have a drop grab. So anyway, here again, we now have the grab put in place. Now the next thing we'll turn is those ugly that everybody says the door hooks. So we're gonna cut, we've cut the door hooks off here. And in this case, I glue the door on. If you are one of a person who wants an opening door, you could go with an Intermountain uh, Railway Company door, which is uh, six foot wide and uh, 10 foot high. And you can see in the upper, in that right side, they made a bracket that would slide the door open and close. We're gonna, we're gonna actually install this, this type of door later, but uh, well, I, as I said, I glue all my doors. So anyway, here's the Athern door put on and we've reshaped the door rollers a little bit to look a little more prototypical. And again, there's the view when we finish that project. Now, uncoupling levers also are a simple thing really to add. They add to the car. It's a great detail, not hard to do, I don't think. Um, again, in this period of time, I was using the Detail Associates eye bolt for doing uncoupling levers now. They're not quite as visible, that eye bolt, so I still use them all the time. And nowadays, uh, I've also, I'm bending most of my own eye bolts. So if you're going to bend that uncoupling lever, you will notice here, uh, this is the sheet that comes with the CalScale uh, brake system, the AB system. And you notice in that lower right-hand corner is I have a drawing of an uncoupling lever. Here's a little bit larger view of that. And you will see that, believe it or not, that is all I use to bend all of my uncoupling levers. Because the only major thing that changes usually on them is the, uh, the length, you know, uh, from, the, from the eye bolt to wherever you mount the, the end of it. And if you, of course, the lower orange card is simply the a top type lever. But again, if you are in, getting into this or you have not, I think the Kale Scale thing is a great sheet to have around because notice it does have all your parts uh, that many of the details you will add to a car, the brake system. And uh, in my case, of course, I put all the dimensions on there. You also notice above the uh, brake lever, that is my standard that I use, for example, half inches, eight thousand, and so on. So anyway, here now we've got the uncoupling lever, we've got the eye bolt in place. Uh, normally that you would drill with the 79 drill again. And uh, as for mounting the, the end, the way I do it, I like to attach the uncoupling lever into the corner of the coupling box and glue it onto the cover of the coupling box. Uh, okay, so somebody's gonna say, well, wait, if I use a liquid cement, isn't that gonna seal up the uh, coupler box? Well, no, you could use a gel or you could use epox. I use a, a gel and once uh, you see a gel sets up, it's gonna be there forever. You can easily pop off a cover or if you, you use screws to put it in, unscrew it and the coupler lever stays attached to that, uh, uncoupling lever stays attached to the coupler box cover. So it, you don't end up losing it. So 
now the next thing on an Athern car that you have to do, which nowadays you don't have to do on most cars, is the end reporting marks. And at, that's one thing I, Irv could have done for us, but he, he didn't, chose not to. So I myself like the transfer, dry transfer lettering. And I, I really like the Clover House. And but however, once this got sold, they, this particular set, the 9600-LF, which uh, I thought was just fantastic for this type of work. I have not seen on his website. I've wrote him some emails, but uh, yeah, he says he'll restock, but I haven't seen anything done for well over a year now. But anyway, you take the dry transfers. I don't apply them to the car. I take either new decal paper or scrap decal paper, and you apply that dry transferring lettering to the decal paper. Uh, you brush over the lettering with microscale liquid decal film, and you now have created a very workable, easy to use water soluble decal that you now soak off in any decal process and attach it to the end of the car. So we've done that with this particular car. And now we'll take a look. Remember I said, if we, we left the, I left the Atherm door on originally, ran it for a while on the railroad for some time, then decided not, nah, let's get that changed. So here we're gonna install the tall door if you do that. To cut, originally when you put the door guides on, those are the Atherm door guides, you're gonna to have to cut them off. And I used to use a razor saw. And now I really recommend what I call the um saw, but really you see it's a razor blade with very fine teeth. When you use this saw, which is made by JLC, as you see in the uh, lower left, you, and you can purchase it, uh, one of the places is um USA. But I also wanna point out that with this saw, you when you make a cut, the kerf is so fine, there's almost rarely ever sanding needed. And whether it's this door guide or it's cutting off the end of a car or whatever you're going to do. However, notice down in the right corner again, I have a comparison of the saw you see that I'm using in the, uh, to cut the door guide off. And there's another copy. Now that was a micromark. Now you notice that the micromark copy has only one screw in it versus the uh, the JLC one with two. And what that, if you're with the only one screw, it had a tendency to vibrate the blade a little bit. And you see, you, I broke, you can break blades much easier with a cheap one. So I, I recommend to you, if you're gonna purchase this, this saw as well as other tools, spend that few, that extra dollar or whatever, and that tool will last you probably your modeling lifetime, where that cheap one, you'll be buying quite a few and you'll have some frustration to deal with that this saw won't give you. Okay, here do you see, that's the kind of cut you get uh, on a car I'm currently working on right now. I, the the Atherin door guide was glued in and now it's been cut off and sanded. Now we go ahead and we go back to the car we were working on, we add, that upper door guide, which is an evergreen piece of uh, two by three strip serene. And we also, of course, have to do, and to uh, now here are the tools basically is all you need is again, I, it would be the, the exacto handle with the scalpel I use and lower, we'll use that uh, pin vise with the pin in it. We're gonna do what's called inverse rivets with it, but. First, so, so the scalpel he was used to cut the door off. And in my case, rather than actually use that door, I also do a lot of my own casting in various parts for cars nowadays. I've got into that. And as a result, you see here a casting of mine. So I would have used the inner mountain door as a master. I will make a resin copy of it. And in this case, that is what's glued here. A little bit closer look. Now, if we go back, you notice the rivet lines, you can see above the door guide, as well as the lower door guide. Uh, those are, at the time I did this car, there, there were, you know, today, I'm gonna to show you in a minute, we have Archer, very fancy uh, resin rivets that we can use. However, at this time, that was not the case. And you could uh, use maybe a, 
And if you noticed in that, when I showed the tools, there was a pounce wheel in there. Some people were taking 5,000 sterene and making rivets that way. Another, like here to fool the eye is just, you take the pin and make a row of rivets and it you know, fools the eye. And it's hard to tell that from uh, the fancier. The door guide at this time, you uh, there they weren't any on the market if you wanted a door stop on the end of the door guide. So I used to bend them on a wire and here's the one I built bent. Now today, again, now you would see uh, the fascia on that Atherton car, I've had, cut a strip of 5,000 sterene and the door guide butts above, that two by three door guide butts against it and you put the rivets on. And on the lower guide today, here we're adding though a superior door. This is gonna be for my home, gonna be one of my house cars, home roads. So uh, I wanted to change to a superior door, but also if down, if you notice the lower door guide there, now or not on the end of it, you have the door stop. They are now commercially available in resin from national scale car. So you no longer have to make your own out of wire. You can uh, purchase them and that's the part that is being used here. So far what we've done, you notice, okay. If you look uh, at the upper left, that was the car with the Atherton door. Now you look down to the lower right and you see it with the uh, tall door, which it really should have. And also, as I said, I use, I would do this, one of my house cars, which is uh, on the lower left. And I, this happens to be a preset screen. So I had to fill the upper right corner and I just chose, that was another Atherin uh, lettering scheme that is correct on their NP car. It was, uh, so another one that I did, of course, remember all the cars have should have the W corner, but uh, as I said, these the CB and Q in the Northern Pacific should have the uh, the W corner. But most modelers, I find, especially on a, if you're in an operation, etc., you show them the car, they don't know the difference anyway. So anyway, here is the car we've now done the work on, and yeah, I think if you compare it. We, it turns out it's a very good representation of that model. Is it perfect? No, but uh, it serves our purpose very well. Today, I also would no longer do uh, leave the molded on ladders. I would do a standoff ladder. I would cut all those rungs, rungs off. Now, quickly, we're gonna take a look. The last thing would be, if you're gonna, one of those, some people choose, they say, I can't see it. So they don't do the underside, but let's take a quick look at the underside. The train line here, normally uh, if it's one and a quarter, it should be 15 thousandths. If it's uh, one, it should be uh, 19 thousandths. At the time I just was experimenting and rather than use the detail associates 19 thousandths, I did a uh, plastic truck 20 thousandths. And many people now in models are doing that. Because if you uh, have to, you know, detail associates brass wire has become hard to get, or it's very getting very expensive. So most of us are using um, Titchy Train Group, or we call it our friend Titchy Don, has got phosphorus bronze wire, and he has twenty thousands. You're going to have to use for that. I also today uh, for the train lines to get uh, this maybe nineteen thousands, eighteen thousands. I buy a floral wire, which you can pick up uh, various places. For the brake piping, 10 or 10 thousandths, for example, is the piping that goes between the air reservoir and the AB valve. The, at this time, the rest of the brake piping, like from the brake cylinder to that AB valve was 12 thousandths brass wire. Today, uh, Titchies, that's 12.25. 12 it, it doesn't really make that big a difference. So then we have the rotting. Again, the, when this car was done, it was 12,000 brass well, wire. Sometimes it's better to have another person, to, another pair of eyes on it. Say, now, wait a minute, it's this. And that's when you say, no, no, it's like this. And then you say, oh. Anyway, the brake lever hangers, here we have 
I use the titchy grabs at this time. You could bend your own. The change here, the chain here is precision scale, 34 links per inch. The more common that you see in the hobby shops, precision scale, you'd have to, you have to order pr probably directly from them, which I've done. Otherwise, you, the local hobby shops, most of them carry the A-line, the uh, black 40 links per ch uh, inch chain. And if you remember, I said, if you use an Atherin brake cylinder, you, you're gonna have to drill it out if you're going to do the underbody detail to which that's that brake lever and chain. And well, the push rod and the clevis, and you, those are available in a tissue set if you choose to do that. Our right, course now there, there's our car and it's been painted. We paint it airbrushed uh, with the black on the bottom and weathering. Uh, at the time when I did this car, I pan pastels didn't exist. Uh, I was using probably solvent paints. Today I'm using all, uh, then I changed to polyscale water base and now Vallejo. Uh, so most of the weathering used to be done with maybe nine parts thinner when it was uh, solvent based with a one part uh, paint, or, you know, the black or whatever color you're weathering today. And then later on, my uh, small Susan worked at uh, Walgreens Corporation. And, you know, after they would throw away a lot of makeup that was tampered with probably. And she brought, oh, started to bring home with some of the eyeshadow and perfect. So I began weathering a long time ago with with eyeshadow and uh, I still do with a couple of them. I The thing about eyeshadow, I feel it's really no different than today's pan pastels. But anyway, here you have the final car uh, as you see it on the railroad. And so I think we've done the car, you know, like I say, except for the square corner, if that bothers you, you're gonna not be able to use the Atherin, but otherwise uh, I think Atherin uh, produced a car that for its time was great and it still can be made into a very nice model today. Obviously, obviously it's the best for Sioux, IC or DSSA. But uh, anyway, here it is on the railroad. And as I said, there's a lot more information regarding bending a wire, uh, uh, the, let's say the uh, roof, uh, the grab irons for the roof, et cetera, and that, the tools there. And there's the, the, it's MN Railroad Cab 100 dogblogspot.com. And you can find a lot of things on there and a lot of cars I've done. So anyway, that's this presentation. And so I'm gonna now, we'll go back and hopefully we are, we're gonna stop sharing. So we're back. And it, does anybody have any questions they wanna ask? Everybody's quiet. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> okay, you guys know how to do it. All right. <laughs> that was great, Lester. I really appreciate that. That was a lot. Really good. I bought the um, from DCC Concepts. Have you ever heard of that company? Uh, They're from. No, from I'm sorry. I I have not. Okay, these guys Ruler? make a. Well, yeah, but there's about a couple hundred holes in it for grab irons. Oh, okay. And it's stainless steel. And since I have gout and the shakes real bad in my hand, I found this little guy here works really well. And they can be bent in roughly half inch increments in terms of their in terms of their width. Okay. okay. So you can get really, really close. And the other thing I bought. Now you you, and it was because of the handle size. Um, you used uh, Exacto tools. Well, I used the MicroMark um, scraper, the, the 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 chisel thing that chisels off chisels off um, detail. I think that's the one I showed you. Was that silver one uh, uh, there? I believe that's the one you're talking about. Okay. Well, I made a bigger handle on it um, out of you. Oh, okay. Just so I could just so I could grip it, but my goodness, is that thing sharp? And it just it just peels off and it peels off all the handrails I had on a molded on uh, Pensy uh, AHM car. 
Okay. Uh, if it works for you, terrific. Yeah, That's all I, I can say. I, uh, for me, I found, I, I prefer the much sharper, you know, as I said, the mini scalpels. And like I said, I use the exacto blades that, you know, I grind to my own specifications. I used to do that too. And then I think if I tried that now, I would end up doing surgery on myself. <laughs> well, but the thing about, by the way, if I, I didn't mention if you do grind, grind your own, you know, I, you put a grinding wheel in one uh, Dremel or, or if you have a grinder with a wheel and you can grind that 17 blade down, but uh, do it very slowly because, you know, you can heat up the blade and it'll literally, literally turn red and you don't want to use the, lose the temperament in that blade, okay? So oh, yeah, yeah, you yeah. got to take your time and you may even want to dip it in water every so often and until you get it ground to the way you want yeah i can i can temper metal without any problem so i can retemper something like that okay bear bear with me with the phone I ring the <laughs> sorry about that oh no problem at all Calls that always great. occur at the wrong time yeah yeah anything else or everybody uh Got, have, maybe you've done a lot of these cars in the past. What, one suggestion. Can I offer one suggestion? Absolutely. Your, your brake components that you run the lines to and from? Yes. Drill the holes in them before you glue them to the car? I do do that. <laughs> I should have mentioned that. Absolutely. Oh, gosh. You try to drill a hole and uh, uh, let's, well, you get the air, air reservoir. Yes, with a longer drill. And if you want to use piano wire, I don't know if any of you make longer drills out of piano wire. It's the old woodworking way of doing it. You take a piece of piano wire, I use 34 thousandths, and you can sharpen that tip. And for example, putting in a train line, that way you can go from either end of the car, drill right through bolsters. You can also do that, like Mont said, for doing the, uh, the air reservoir. But you try to do the AB valve once it's, it's glued on. No, do you want to drill that ahead of time? Or you aren't going to drill, if you use that atherin brake cylinder, you're not going to drill that later if you uh, don't do it prior to mounting the pieces on. I should have mentioned that. I do that, obviously, all the time, pre-drill. I'm afraid to admit how many years I didn't do that. <laughs> well... I normally cut them off if I did. If I forgot to do it, they end up getting. It's much easier to cut them off and reglue. It is, in my opinion. Unless you've made some really fancy mount for you know the brake cylinder or the air reservoir, which some guys do. You know, you notice I work mostly. I I enjoy working most in serene if I can. And there are a lot of great parts out there. For example, I you know on the running board on the on that long, longitudinal one, uh, you know Yarmouth models now he has etched brass that if you don't want to do the one by two steering, you can buy the part. Uh, you have to do a little bending, but most parts today are commercially available from some manufacturer if you are willing to pay the price. I'm old school, so I still. If I can do it myself, I don't have to wait for the mail to deliver it. So, and uh, of course, the pennies then can go to another car. So, yep. all right. Any, anybody else got things to add? Guess Thank not. you so much, Lester. That oh, you're great. very welcome. I could, I could teach you how to stitch yourself up next week. <laughs> Well, now, uh, I tell you, when I, I do a lot of cutting today with, uh, you know, there's a circular saw, saw blade, obviously. You guys are aware, made for a Dremel tool, right? And yes. on the underbottom, oh, and that, now, Micromart makes a custom cover that you can buy and mount on the Dremel tool to cover the saw. I don't do that. I'm, I'm lucky enough that uh, the man upstairs has allowed me to keep my hands steady. So I use that, but on, on many of the kits, even yet today, you have that gate screw that looks about the size of a dime on the bottom of a car. And if you're going to detail the bottom, you got to cut that thing off, okay? Now, 
what that saw blade allows me to do quickly is, you know, just again, the woodworking industry, uh, you watch a lot of carpenters when they got to make a day do, they'll just take a saw blade. And that's what I do on that big, uh, you cut curves and you cut a lot of them. Now you can take uh, 17 or uh, 18 exacto blades and they pop off almost e very easily. And soon you got that uh, monster gate screw cleaned up and then take a scriber and uh, describe and you got the boards and you got a beautiful looking floor and the gate's gone. And the one I know uh, that really came with that monster gate that I remember first was if you guys own ribside cars uh, at one point when they came out, yeah. they especially had that monster yeah. gate on the bottom. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I actually yep. remember getting an uh, email saying, the... I'm sorry. Um, I Accurail coughed. I'm sorry. That... AccuRail has that car now. They, yes. Right. And that, that gate is still there, obviously. Yeah. And there are a few others. I just, I don't know who's, I just did one. And there, that gate was there too, that had to be cut off if you're going to do the underbody work. Because that way, the, uh, obviously, your underframe fits nicely up against the floor. And, and if you're going to detail that car and leave that gate, uh, I don't think it's very effective. That's all I'll say on that. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right well that's uh, that's great information anybody else have any updates this week no but you know the conversation before we let les take over prompted me to find a photo um so i'm going to share this that's just so you know that hair did exist at one time <laughs> 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 Nice. Hey, I think there were a lot of us had the uh, hair and uh, uh, believe it or not, this used to be down to here at one time too. But hey, yeah. that was yep. now it's now it's not as much work. Right. <laughs> but you know was... the damn but but I don't know about you guys, but the damn barber won't give me any discount for this. Yeah, right. no. for, pretty soon he it takes won't longer have to, to find it. it. Yeah, that's yep. right. All he has yep. to do is pretty soon all he have to do is shine it. You that's know. Right. Put, put, yep. <laughs> That was my that was the night of my high school graduation. <laughs> oh, <baby. laughs> we'll have to have one of these days we'll have a session where we all bring pictures of our high school. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let's see if anybody can recognize everyone. <laughs> pictures of trains are much better to show. That's right. Oh yeah. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> There's a reason we got into this hobby. Yes. <laughs> but guys, if you enjoyed this type of presentation, I've got some others, you know, old ones like that, that maybe we could update when I, and share with you if you'd be interested in some of the older stuff like that. Sure. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. I just have to ask you to please take a breath. <laughs> I try hard. But I, I remember, I only got four. Aliens. I had to do this 90 slides in 45 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> well done. Well done. <laughs> All right. Well, we so do not have any, a presenter. Did you get any snow up there, Lester? Uh, I moved four to five inches yesterday. I moved eight inches this morning, and I will be crashing early tonight. And we're <laughs> they're talking about another chance of more tonight. Some places we average here in the metropolitan area, Plymouth, twelve inches. Uh, South Minneapolis area where I used to live, they got about uh, 15, 16, and outlying, they're up to 18 inches in places. So my snow blowers were working yesterday, <clears throat> today, and that's only my front. I still have the back area and decks to clear off. If you want to come on up, I've got a spare bedroom, <laughs> guest bedroom. I've got spare Can't get there, stools. the snow's too deep. That's right. <laughs> the wife was kind enough to shovel oh. 15 inches of snow with our snowblower that I bought her when I was working on the rear road. All right. Oh, she's good at that. Boy, you're very lucky. Yeah. You're very lucky. Yeah, oh, we, that's well, true. We just, I just know you and I talked the other morning, and we only had rain and just this glaze of ice that melted during the night. I so. could show you photos that just so make you lose sleep tonight with the amount of snow. 
So, yep. <laughs> um, but you know what? There is a positive to it. Once you get it cleaned off, you go to the basement and you work on trains. You can't go outside and do much of, That's unless right. you're a ice fisher person or some of that. Or, I, or you I, need I, parts. <laughs> I prefer hibernation <laughs> with the trains. Yep. Yep. So. Very yep. good. Well, we don't All have right. anything scheduled for next week yet. So if you're interested, Dave, you got a question? Oh, you're muted. Um, but if you're interested in uh, in presenting, let me know. Otherwise, have a great Thursday, and uh, we'll see you next week. See you, guys. Well, you thank you, guys. Thank you. Have a great evening. <laughs> thank All right. you. All right. Thanks, Les. You're welcome. Yeah, thanks, thank Les. you.